Sherry. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome as we gather in worship on this Palm Passion Sunday as we begin the holiest week of the year for people of the Christian faith. We are thrilled that you are here with us this morning in worship. Those of you who are worshiping with us at home via our live Facebook feed, we bid you welcome and we're glad to have you with us virtually this morning. It is a special day uh, for us, a special time for us to uh, seek to live into the story of Jesus as we enter into these holy days. And we'll speak more about that as we uh, gather, as we continue our gathering in just a few moments. There is one thing I do want to share with you. Well, let's see. Les, can I invite you to share about the uh, concert that will be coming up after Easter? Which, and you get the mic there so people can hear on Facebook. Thank you. A lot of you will remember Bradley Martin, who was the organist here for three years. I can't name the years, but I can sure name the times uh, that he was here because he was a brilliant accompanist uh, and a much greater qualified accompanist than we deserved. Um, he uh, was really quite good, and he's very fond of this church. Brad has taken a teaching position in California, but he's coming back to Western um, to uh, Western North Carolina to do a concert of the Gershwin Piano Concerto. He's going to do it with a woodwind quintet. He's doing his dress rehearsal here, not this Tuesday, but a week from this Tuesday. We don't have the time yet, but it'll probably be, I'm hoping, around 5.30. But uh, it'll be a free concert for us. Uh, it'll, about an hour's worth of material he'll be bringing, and we hope you'll come. So it will be in the Faith and Fellowship Center? It'll be in the Faith and Fellowship Center, yes, play, playing on the new Baldwin piano, which is down there. It'll be quite a good experience. Great. Thank you very much, Les. Uh, I'll be away that week on a preaching retreat. Les will be leading that service, uh, and so we look forward to that being a very special time. We'll have it in the bulletin next week. We'll have it in the HUMC News. This all kind of uh, became available just recently, and so, but we'll uh, continue to remind you about that again a week from Tuesday. Uh, here at the Faith and Fellowship Center. That should be a very special time of, of celebration uh, as uh, in the early days of the great 50 days of Easter. So that'll be great. Uh, with that being said, you all have your palm leaves today. Hopefully everybody has a palm leaf. Can you, can you wave? Can I see your palm leaves? 
So at some point, uh, look, it looks great. It really is, from my standpoint, looking out there and seeing that, that really is quite a wonderful visual. Uh, you can put them down now. Thank you. But, but uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, that, didn't, that didn't sound the way I intended it to sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't mean that. But, uh, but during the sermon this morning, I may, uh, I may uh, ask you to do it again. In fact, when you see me in the pulpit, anytime you see me uh, waving the palm leaves, that'll be your cue. Uh, to join me in that. It is a special day of celebration. It's a special opportunity for us to continue our spiritual pilgrimage to the cross in very meaningful ways as we have entered now into Holy Week. With that uh, word of, of uh, sharing from Les and with the word of welcome and, uh, and instruction, I invite us all to take a moment, catch our breaths. We'll look to Sherry to lead us in some centering music as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Welcome. Will you bow with me in prayer? Almighty God, we give you thanks for this holy season, for this holy day, this holy gathering. We give you thanks for the gift of worship. We give you thanks for the call of Christ that we be self-denying, cross-carrying followers of Jesus. And we pray that as we gather on this Palm Passion Sunday, we remember we give thanks, we repent, we confess, and we seek to live fully into the calling which you have placed upon us as individuals and as your church, the body of Christ in the world. Bless this service of worship to your glory, we pray in your holy name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing now together, Hosanna, loud Hosanna.
You may be seated. Let us join now together and confess our faith by saying aloud the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. It's found in your hymnal on page 881, or you can look at the words behind me if that's helpful. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare to go to God in prayer this morning, I would remind you that in your bulletin we do have a listing of long-term and short-term uh, prayer needs. And I would just invite you to let that be a part of your prayer life in a spirit of intercessory prayer this week. Uh, also, uh, this morning we want to give you an opportunity to bear witness to those that might be on your heart today silently. Perhaps you've come in with a burden or a concern for someone uh, that, uh, that you care about and you'd like to bear witness to that simply by raising your hand in a silent prayer request. As we go to God in prayer this morning, we'll enter into this time silently. After a few moments of silence, I'll offer a brief spoken prayer on our behalf and then we'll pray aloud the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Father, in the stillness of this moment, we seek to still our hearts and minds. We're mindful of how hard that is. So hard to focus. <laughs> there are so many things that trouble us, so many things that challenge us. Life is filled with distractions. And we come before you this morning grateful that life is filled with other things. Joy, laughter, friendship, family, faith. We come in a posture of praise and thanksgiving this morning. We thank you that as the church we can gather yet again for this beginning of Holy Week. We have gathered in other settings and other places for Palm Sunday or Palm Passion Sunday as we sometimes refer to this day. We've gathered in this sanctuary and in other settings. We've gathered physically. We have gathered virtually. We come with thankful hearts this morning for the gift of of worship. And we also come in a spirit of intercession. We have names in our bulletin. We pray for those needs. We have names and needs that we've lifted up silently as we've raised our hands. And we gather this morning with our own needs, physically here in this space and virtually at home. We come with our own concerns, our own worries, our own pains, our own fears. 
We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, for the peace of Ukraine, for an end to war. We come before you this morning asking that you would be present in painful places. We ask, O oh God, that you would meet us at our point of need and that you would use us as instruments of your peace and grace and healing in the world. Teach us again, Lord, what it means to be your church in our moment in history. Use this week, O oh God, we pray, to draw us near to Jesus Draw us near to the cross. Empower and enable us to be your church. We ask this in the holy name of Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is to heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is that time in our service when we celebrate the joys that we have in our congregation this morning. We have birthdays that are coming up, so happy birthday uh, to those of you. As I look at that list this morning, I see a birthday coming up for Ruth McClarty. So Ruth, happy birthday to you in a few days. That's great. Happy birthday. Uh, and let's see, our anniversaries. We have folks who are celebrating anniversaries uh, today. So a very happy anniversary to our folks who are celebrating their special day coming up. I wonder if there are other joys in the room that you would like to speak aloud. If so, I'm going to come and grab this microphone. I know many of you have good outside voices, but uh, for our Facebook friends, we would need a microphone, and we don't want them to miss out on anything. Does anybody have uh, a joy that you would like to name uh, this morning? I, I, want to, I want to say a, a word of uh, thanks to God that we've got Gloria back with us today. Gloria has been away from the community for a couple of years, and she is back with us today. So Gloria, so good to see you this morning. We welcome you back to your HUMC family today. Anyone else? I'm going to let you give a silent joy in just a moment, but right now, if you raise your hand, I am so coming to you with this microphone. <laughs> Anybody with a joy you'd like to name aloud this morning? I see Trish back there fanning. It feels hot to me, too. Is it hot to y'all? I'm going to work on that. I'll see what I can do. Uh, I've got a key. I know the combination to the lock. <laughs> I'm going to work on it. It does feel a little stuffy in here to me today. We could open the doors. That'd take care of things real quick, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So do you have joys that you would name simply by lifting your hand uh, silently this morning? Thank you. Thanks be to God. With that being said, we'll turn to our offering this morning. Uh, there are a number of ways you can support the life and work of this church, and we are grateful uh, for the generous support that we receive through the mail or online. We have online giving available through our website. It's very easy. And of course, while you are here worshiping with us physically, we'll take some time uh, to receive a morning offering. So I'll look for our ushers to lead us now. Last night I lay a-sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, methought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Methought the voice of angels from heaven. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your gates and sing. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to your King. Changed the streets no longer rang. A 
hushed were the glad hosannas the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill. As the shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill, as the shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, hark how the angels sing, Hosanna. Again, the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on the streets, the gates were open wide, and all who would might enter, and no one was denied. No need of stars by night or sun to shine by day it was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away it was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away Jerusalem, Jerusalem, when for the night is o'er, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna forevermore, Hosanna in the highest. you entrust us with that which belongs to you as we serve as your stewards for a season. We thank you for the blessing of returning back a portion for the work of your church in the world. Help us as your church to be faithful stewards, we pray. We ask your blessings upon this offering to your glory. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you, choir. Our gospel lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem, when he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples ahead, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked him, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As they rode along, people were spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully uh, with a loud voice. For all the deeds of power that they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones (laughs) would shout out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Luke's the only one that gives us that sentence. I love that sentence. I'm so glad that Luke got that into the story. It seems to me that whenever I read that, I want to proclaim that praise of Christ will not be silenced. Praising Christ is our work, but it's also the work of the whole creation. If we fail to do our part, it doesn't mean that God will not be glorified. Somebody else will pick it up. The stones will shout out. I love that sentence that Luke offers us this morning. Praise is due to Christ. We bear witness to that today. And we seek to bear witness to that, not only in formal corporate worship, but with our lives, the lives that we lead in our words, our deeds. An early hymn of the church, quoted by Paul in his letter to the Philippians, we'll refer to that a little later on this morning, says of Jesus that God has also highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Today marks the beginning of the holiest week of the year for people of the Christian faith. It's Palm Sunday or Palm Passion Sunday or Passion Palm Sunday. And with this Sunday we begin Holy Week. And during these days the church seeks to live into the story of Jesus. I've always felt like this is just really a good time to try to engage in the story of Jesus, to see ourselves there in the story. We've been on this spiritual pilgrimage to the cross since Ash Wednesday, and this week is important as we try to really live into these days with Jesus as he makes his way to the cross. And we start today in this very festive celebration on Palm Sunday. We provide palm leaves and we invite our imaginations to see ourselves there in the crowd welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem. We joined with the cheering voices of Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, glory in the highest heaven. And it's a good day, I think, for us to consider what it means for Jesus to be the Messiah. 
a very different kind of Messiah, a very different kind of king. The symbolism of this triumphal entry, not a show of military might, not the kind of entry into Jerusalem that Pilate might have had for the beginning of Passover, not a normal kingly procession at all, hearkening back to the Old Testament prophet of Zechariah who envisioned the Messiah coming on a colt, the foal of a donkey, envisioning the Messiah bringing in a day of peace. As we think about this story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem, we we recognize the subversive nature of God's kingdom. (laughs) It is not aligned with the kingdoms of the world. We come to bear witness to this kingdom that infiltrated the earth in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, this surprising kingdom where the expression of power is not found in imperial, military, political might, but rather in weakness, embodied and revealed in poverty and weakness. It's a good day, I think, for us to reflect on the gates of our own hearts, our own Jerusalem, if you will, our own willingness to welcome Jesus into our lives, knowing that once he comes in, he's bound to turn a few tables over, run out the money changers. This day, I think, fills our minds with imagination. It's a a day of joyous welcome. It's a time to, to think about how we as individuals And as we as the church uh, are invited to welcome Jesus, to call to welcome Jesus into our arms and our hearts and our lives. We want to know the God of all creation and we've come to believe that we know this God most fully in the person of Jesus. In Alistair McGrath's book on Martin Luther's Theology of the Cross, he points to the great reformer's belief that God is most fully revealed in the cross of Jesus Christ most fully revealed but still hidden, so that we don't see God fully. There's a paradox. God is hidden yet revealed, most fully revealed in the cross. That was what Martin Luther believed. And and Luther, according to McGrath, tied this understanding, Luther's theology of the cross, to the Old Testament story that you may remember in the book of Exodus where Moses asked God, let me see your glory. And God said, well, you can't see it all. (laughs) You can't handle it, Moses. So he put Moses in the cleft of the rock and he passed by letting Moses see God's back, not letting Moses see God's face. It's too much glory. And so Martin Luther looked at that text and said, that's the way it is in the cross. We can't see the fullness of God's glory. We can't embrace the ineffable God in God's fullness, but we see the most revelation of God that we can see in the cross of Jesus Christ. It's where we come to know the nature of God most fully. It's where we have the best chance to have the greatest sense and understanding of God's identity. And having the greatest sense of God's identity enables us to have the best understanding of our own identity. Jurgen Moltmann's famous book, The Crucified God, he writes these words, Christian identity can be understood only as an act of identification with the crucified Christ. So if we fail to to make our spiritual pilgrimage all the way to the cross, if we stop short, we'll miss something very important about the nature of God. We'll miss something important about the crucified God. We'll miss something very important about the identity of God, and we'll miss something about our own identity as well. So we observe this day, not only as Palm Sunday, but also as Palm Passion Sunday or Passion Palm Sunday. Because we recognize that even as the church offers services during the week in Holy Week to tell the story of Jesus and to live into the story of these holy days. It's not possible for everybody to attend those services. And so we want to be sure that we don't go from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday and miss the story in between. We we know we'd miss something important there. So now it gives me a chance to offer a commercial. So here's the commercial. This week we'll have Holy Week services. Thursday at 5.30 we'll have a Holy Thursday service, a Maundy Thursday service. We'll remember the new commandment that Jesus gave us to love one another as as He has loved us. And uh, sometimes we will have foot washing. We won't do that this year. We'll have communion, though, together at 5.30 this Thursday. If you can come and be with us, we'd love to have you. 
Friday, Good Friday, we'll remember the crucifixion of Jesus at 5.30, once again here in the church sanctuary, both of those services in the church sanctuary. And Good Friday will be a somber service where we'll just tell the story. No preaching, just tell the story interspersed with some song. We'll try to be faithful to the story this week. Wednesday, this is not really necessarily a Holy Week service, but we're adding it intentionally during Holy Week this year. We are going to have a service of healing on Wednesday night after supper. Supper at 515 in the Faith and Fellowship Center. Six o'clock we'll have a service of healing. So we're trying as the church to gather and worship and to do things that will help us live into the story of Jesus. But I know everybody won't be able to attend those services, so I want to be sure today on Palm Passion Sunday that we don't miss the cross. Because if we go from waving palms to hallelujah on Easter Sunday without Good Friday, we have missed something quite important. What was it Paul said in Corinthians? We proclaim Christ crucified. He went on to say, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It was the whole of Paul's message. And so to miss that is to miss something crucially important. In his letter to the Philippian church, he did borrow that Christ him that I shared with you I referenced earlier this morning let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Some scholars suggest that line right there, even death on the cross, was something Paul added that wasn't in the original Christ hymn, but that Paul wanted to make a point, that it wasn't just that Jesus died, he didn't live to old age and die of natural causes. It wasn't just that. It was that Jesus died on the cross. It's important to understand the suffering and the humiliation and the shame and the political implications of dying on a Roman cross. Even death on a cross, Paul wants to make sure that's clear. Therefore, the hymn continues, God also highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, we gather on this festive day. We wave our palm leaves in joyous welcome of the Savior of the world. We open our hearts and minds and lives to the work of this subversive Messiah who upends our understandings of power, strength, and wisdom. And we continue our spiritual pilgrimage to the cross. And we seek to be reminded that the way of discipleship is the way of sacrificial love, the way of dying to the world so that we might be raised to new life in Christ. We seek to be renewed in our faith this week, hearing again the call to be self-denying, cross-carrying Jesus followers. We claim our allegiance to the kingdom of God, seeking to live under the lordship of Christ who enters Jerusalem very humbly. The king, who doesn't refer to us as his subjects, but brothers and sisters, friends, children. We've come to begin these holy days of Holy Week to bask in so great a love. So may we journey humbly in these days ahead. May these be days of prayer, days of confession and repentance, days of worshiping God who is most fully made known in the cross of Christ. One of the key understandings I think about this God that we come to know most fully in the cross is this God who stands in solidarity with human suffering in order to one day bring human suffering, especially unjust suffering, to an end. The God who is in solidarity with our deepest pains and hurts. I'm in my 31st year of pastoral ministry, and I, I'm a long way from getting it all figured out. The more I've come to know, the more I realize how little I know. I've often said in my years of pastoral ministry and through educational opportunities, I believe 
I've come to know more about God. I know more theological language than I did at one time. And I believe I've come to know more about God. I am sure I've come to know more about people. And I've come to observe that sometimes God's presence is most fully palpable in moments of our greatest sadness and pain. I've seen God at work beside sick beds. I've watched the presence of Christ move among people in funeral homes. I've experienced the risen Christ by gravesides. And so when Martin Luther believes that God is most fully revealed in the cross, in the place of greatest suffering, that what we know about this crucified God is that He has come to redeem through pain and suffering. I want to be sure that as we tell the story, we don't do a flyover of Calvary. I want to be sure that on this day, that we remember that the shouts of Hosanna will turn to cries of crucify Him before the week is out. I want to be sure that we remember that the one who came into Jerusalem that day did not stop short of the cross. I want to lift up and bear witness to the Christ who reveals to us the fullness of God's love and His pain and suffering love and His sacrificial love. And my hope for you and for me as we enter into this week, I hope that this week will be a holy week set apart for us all. And we can go about our days as if nothing is different about this week. But this week is different. It's one of 52 weeks that is quite different for us as the church. And if we don't observe it, then, then God won't love us any less. I'm convinced of that. But my hope and my prayer for us all is that we'll live into the story as best we can. That, we will, that we'll seek to know a little bit more of this God who is revealed in the cross. And that through knowing more of this God, we might be better able to live in such a way that this God will be revealed to some degree in us through our acts of compassion, our acts of love and justice and mercy and grace. And may God be glorified in our witness. May God give us sufficient grace to bear witness to that day that we have not yet fully realized, but that day we believe is coming when every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I survey... The wondrous cross is our closing hymn today. I invite you to stand as you are able.
for joining us in worship this morning. Those of you in this space, those of you worshiping with us at home, we'll close our service as we traditionally do in this service with uh, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Before then, I invite you to look to me for your benediction this morning. May you go forth in peace. And the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.